Ooh. All right. Here we are. All right. If we only have 25 minutes, I think there's only one question to ask this morning. What's that? If you guys could have dinner with one celebrity, who would it be and why? Hmm. <laughs> that is the only question <laughs> to ask with 25 minutes left. Um, this question, I always think, I don't want to be one-on-one with any of them because I, I hate small talk and it, he doesn't know me. But they don't know me and I don't really know them. So it would take a while to, I would prefer in a group setting, you know, like those times that we've had lunch with Baron when there's like four or five people around, that's much better because uh, the celebrity can be kind of intimidating. So I think it would be Chesterton, GK Chesterton. I would love to sit down with, but in a group setting, you know, with people he also knew. Hmm. So I could just kind of be a little bit of fly on the wall, hmm. throw in a couple comments here and there, but just kind of witness his aura. Man, I was not thinking like a GK Chesterton. My mind went somewhere else. Hey, Rob, do you have anybody in mind? Um, well, I thought it would, I kind of like the group setting idea and we got on the, talking about this, um, last night at the, the dinner after the campus mass and shout out to, um, Marilyn, who is a, she's a junior at SIUE, SIUE, she's awesome. Um, but she said that she doesn't know why, but she always says a Blinken to that question, but she huh. doesn't, she just, but she doesn't even know why she even thinks that apparently. And, but then that, as I thought about it, I was like, actually my answer would be Marilyn and a Blinken. Like I would like to have <laughs> dinner with the, the two, two of, of them guys. because it would be so funny. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's my answer. He's a hometown hero too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And Marilyn's hilarious. So that would be, she's awesome. I didn't know that. I wonder if these yeah, celebs, less about Lincoln, these celebs that people always pick like Lincoln. Um, I don't know if people f- pick Freddie Mercury or whatever, like they just get sick of, I've never heard anybody pick him, but yes, I'll bet you continue. people have picked him. Do they have to be dead or can it be like any celebrity dead or alive? <laughs> I think I think dead or alive. Dead or alive, for sure. I'm just I, I'm just picturing I mean, these these celebrities who have all of these dinners, like cameo appearances they have to do. Because like, oh, Marilyn picked you, Lincoln. He's like, oh my gosh. Where are we eating? <laughs> <laughs> just get sick of it. I think Churchill would be interesting. Just because I, I heard he was such. Well, he just seems like a wild guy. Mm-hmm. Like whatever he's thinking is going to be coming out of his mouth, and you wouldn't have to take too long with the small talk. I bet you could just ask him a blistering question, and he'd just dive right in, mm-hmm. like not afraid. Hey, what do you think about Nazis? Boom, conversation <laughs> started. Mm-hmm. We're into it. He would be a great uh, silent guest. Actually, he would probably be a bad song, I guess. Winston Churchill? Yeah. Yeah. I, did. I like the feisty ones. Mm-hmm. I, I think he'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think that's why he he was made for the Second World War, man. Mm-hmm. He, he had to get the job done. I, yeah, I think I'd go with Churchill. Or Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker. Come on, come oh, on, Connor. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I was hoping you would say that. Oh. All right, let's de-escalate the situation <laughs> and <laughs> continue. He's the, he's the greatest, well, he's the greatest running back in Georgia football history. Won oh. national championship in the Heisman in 1980. And he's actually running for Senate. Running for here Senate, in Georgia. Yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. And I think he's going to win just because he was such a good football player. Yeah. We should have him on the podcast. Yeah. His campaigns are legit. Would you, ooh, here's a question. Would you, if you were forming a a super team in their heyday, 
would you take at running back Herschel Walker or Bo Jackson? I super team, in, <laughs> super team in college or like of college players in college. Yeah. College football team. I don't know. They're both, I don't know. I've never seen Herschel Walker play, but was he in the, like the nineties, eighties, eighties, same with Bill Jackson, right? Yep. Yep. Hmm. I mean, I would go with, I would go with Herschel. I, I think he's the really, um, yeah, I would. I would. Huh. Statistically, I think he is the best running back in college football history. Mike, you're just like a little close now to the, this. Is I've never had to tell you you're too close, but you can see how tall your sound is. You see that? You redlined. Oh, I see it. Mm. I see it. Have you noticed how tall your sound is? Well, I'm trying not to get the echoey. Mm. You know, right? So I was trying to get as close as I can without allowing my booming voice to. Mm-hmm. Engage the room. <laughs> this Speaking isn't of, possible. Uh, engaging the room, our our chapel progress is uh, going quite nicely. Hopefully, by next week, we should be getting hard floor in, which will make it a very echoey space. But um, the stencil work on the back wall is nearly done. Painting in the ceiling, the uh, this little arch we're making not little; it's a large arch that kind of borders the sanctuary. Wall and ceiling. It's being built. It's exciting stuff, dudes. I'm very pumped. We had a great awesome. re- we had a great retreat this weekend too. Um, we had about forty kids go off site to a place in Lamont and just clown around and uh, hang out. But then we also did some good talks and mass and adoration and confession and it was very chill. It was so good after. A year and a half of not doing anything like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. How's the campus life been for you, Roberto? Uh, good. Yeah, very good. It's we've had. Um, I don't know. You know, it's just it's kind of like getting used to it being back a little bit more to normal. I would say it's not like pre-COVID normal on campus, but it's way better than last year um so i don't know i'm kind of blanking on any big updates but things are rolling we got a freshman retreat coming up this weekend and um no it's good yeah i don't have much to say this morning but all good nice hey no news no news is good news Mm mm-hmm is Mm -hmm. it i someone said that one time I think it was it Winston Churchill. <laughs> Imagine if he said that to donors. Like, so how's how's your Newman Center going? Like, I can't really think of anything, but no news is good news, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No news is good news. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep, here's twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Continue being stagnant. I'm paying you for the status quo. <laughs> Let it cruise along. Mm-hmm. Well, in some respects, no news is good news. We are I, my unpleasantness of the have I shared this with you guys that we have a sewer issue in the house I live in mm. well I think you it's did share pretty, that like, pretty systemic it needs, needs some concrete cutting and digging and fixing of old clay some old clay pipe that's just finally biting the dust which kind of like one of those things where you wish you didn't know but you're kind of glad you do so you can at least do something about it but it's manifesting itself in no like big things like the thing that made me notice that the plumbing was having an issue is fixed. But then this other more profound issue that doesn't have symptoms, but will mm. in really badly if it's not taken care of eventually, you know what I mean? Oh yes. It's kind of an mm-hmm. analogy for life. Like, do you really want to know how bad it is? It's kind of like the economy. Like, how does an economy work? I don't know. Like, it's very melancholic this morning. <laughs> don't don't look at it. Don't even. I don't want to look. Yeah. Don't yep. just use your credit card and just keep mm-hmm. swiping. Right. Money's mm-hmm. money's not a national real thing. debt. We it's something in the trillions. Is that bad? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what I does don't that mean? <laughs> yeah, it's not a real number. Yeah. 
I would. I don't know if you guys would relate to this at at all, but it's an interesting question. You know, in it's just early, I think, too. But um, like, how's campus going? But I've noticed that I have like, I almost call it like a lag with kind of not being updated on campus. But I'm only there like two days a week, pretty much. Like I have the Sunday mass, and I have a, like a campus day when I'm able to go to go out. And so even at the dinner, like last night, it was great. There was a lot of new new faces there and everything and a couple um a couple of like the students that are just yeah you hear their stories like briefly it's like wow that's really cool that you're that you're here it's kind of amazing all the providence that that went into to getting you here um but i i do feel like there's i don't know just i i call it a lag of like to me it it feels like like fall outreach is like just starting but we're kind of like well into it you know midway through September now. Um, but I've noticed that too. And I don't know if it's having like just, and I don't have, I'm not busier than, than the next guy or anything like that, but just having like multiple assignments, I, I kind of do feel like that quite a bit of not, not out of the loop necessarily, but it's just like, yeah, it's like, okay, like this thing's going and this thing's going and you kind of have to take them from afar um, a little bit. So I don't know if it's just like learning how to be you, you kind of like a new style of, of leadership that have to have to do or, or what, but, um, I have noticed that, like, I remember it, I relate it to, you've talked about this before, um, Connor of like a priest cannot have, uh, I think you called it like emotional hangovers, you know, where like, you're just kind of on to the next thing and everything. But I have noticed, you know, like three and a half years in now where like stuff will kind of like continue to come to come back and you're like, wow, okay, I need to like think about this now or kind of like I have some time to process like that this happened or that happened. And um, I just find myself, I don't know if that if that makes any sense that like, I hadn't really thought about it before, before now, um, but it's like campus is rolling. It's good. Like the trajectory is good. So that's what it is right now in my mind. Yeah. I think, um, the other day in a meeting, our team director, Daniel gave us like an update of what all is going on with the focus missionaries. And I, I th sympathize a little bit that yeah, fall rich fall outreach. I was there for a lot of it cause I I'm fortunate enough to be here seven days a week. Um, so I was there on move-in day and handing out flyers and I was there at the big events that we, you know, started out the week, the semester with and, um, the opening of the coffee shop and first masses and everything. And our daily masses have been really good. We've, you know, 30, 35, sometimes 40 people at a daily mass, which for us is really good. Um, and almost all students, uh, you know, there's some people in the community that come to mass here, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool, like tons and tons of undergrads. That's the that's the majority of, of the people who darken our doors. Hmm. So, but that's what I see is it's basically like the Newman Center. Um, I go out on campus a little bit, but the missionaries are the ones that are like out there, you know, and it was kind of cool to, <laughs> on the retreat, we had one kid who identified as an atheist agnostic and one kid that was Hindu and a lot of different kids that are like different spiritual, but not religious. And then there were the hardcores, you know, that came first thing they did when they got to campus was go to mass. Um, so, you know, they are the leading edge. They're, they're out there and barehanding. They're like barehanding an hour, not an hour a day, but some certain numbers of numbers of hours a week and thinking of different things to, uh, the other day they were out there, um, with one of those coffee charts, you know, like the creamer versus black coffee, um, you ever seen that? Like, which number are you? Uh, it's like a, it's like a matrix of how much cream people use. It's just like the, by the color of the coffee, like which one are you, you know, as a conversation starter and then giving them free coffee cards to come to our coffee shop. So it's a little bait and bait and switch. Um, but you know, just meeting people that way, getting people in Bible studies, having meaningful conversations. And I'm like, man, I don't, 
I don't see much of that. You know, I'm in the office, like working on a chapel and trying to fix a sewer, but that's, it's, I'm settling more into that role, I guess, as a shepherd and a priest that, um, you, you foster the kind of, you, you, you create the environment and the place and the relationships and networks that allow this kind of evangelization and Mm. growth to happen. Um, and I like that. You, you, that, that rem- I would say I didn't want to cut you off there, but well, you, um, you did though. But I don't regret it. <laughs> um, but our vicar general um, will always talk. I think it's actually a barren line from from years ago, but I've heard him talk about this a lot. Of like part of the role of the kind of the modern day priest is, I think it's barren might have like related it to the the bapt the baptism of like being baptized as a king for anybody but he said like you have to properly order the charisms of the people of god and like if you do that in your role like if the charisms are properly ordered with the people around you then you can have like a very good thing going but it doesn't mean that you're on like yeah campus every day necessarily right yeah, he. I think he said that to us out in the retreat when we were out there. You got to properly order the charisms of the people of God, which is not an easy task. Like I think it's a a great skill to be able to know where people's strengths lie, know what your role is, and know how you can facilitate the strengths of others. Man, because it's super tempting to get in there and try and do everything. Uh, yeah, or just step back and say like, "Hey, this is your thing," but to have that balance. Where, yeah, it's like operating a mother house and you got this little community and you send people out, but then you allow them to come back in and eat in the kitchen and eat at the Eucharist and like feed them for, uh, for their work. That's cool stuff, man. I, I like when I listen to y'all talk about the, especially the, the missionaries that you have and the communities that you formed, um, I see it's also, it's sustaining for you guys. Because y'all constantly have a community that you can come back to. Well, probably more so with Connor uh, because he's there all the time. But like having a community that you can wake up and pray with every day, that you can like talk discipleship with every day, um, that they're kind of coworkers. Obviously, they they work for the the Newman Center, but y'all are also like on the same mission together. Uh, That's... I kind of have that with our faith formation office, but um, yeah, I, I I think it's helpful in terms of how you live out the priesthood as well mm-hmm. to have that little intentional discipleship community that allows you to, yeah, like support each other and stay focused on the mission as well. So I, I don't know if that's the case for you out there at, at Newman, if you feel that consistency and support and just having a little community out there. Yeah, it has been huge. Having uh particularly praying in the morning with everybody. Um, somebody's buzzing. You know, I was thinking I just got it. I was thinking last night about my buzzing phone and how do you guys remember AIM? You guys use that? Mm-hmm. I didn't use it, but I remember it. Do you remember away messages? How you? I'm assuming it's a message that you would create well, for when you were away. It was like you could log out of AIM, which meant you were not available. Of course, nobody could mm-hmm. see that you were mm-hmm. even online and available to chat. But you could, you could leave yourself online and put in a away message, which was kind of artful. You could, you know, put in a quote from somebody like "Be the change you want to see in the world," um, or something funny or or whatever. Uh, which just told people that your computer was on, you were logged on, but you weren't there to chat. Um, and I feel like having a cell phone is like constantly always being on aim, but never having an away message. And so you're just always available to chat, you know? Hmm. Yeah. And that, I think that's what bugs me about texts. Like email is just, people are just, people are just laying things into your inbox with email and they don't expect you to immediately respond. You're not chatting. They're just like leaving a little message, and then when he's gets to his inbox, he'll he'll read it and respond. But a text is like aim in your pocket twenty four seven, and I think it's driving me insane. 
<laughs> Maybe if they just had an away message for the messages app. Do you think? I I think they may have. They do that, that for driving. Like an automatic reply for driving. Yeah. They do. Yeah. I don't know that mine is even on. I don't think so. Only a few people I ever text. It will say like, "Hi, I'm driving right now." Yeah, but that is true. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm with you. I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, so ordering. I read an interest. Oh no, that was. Uh, it made me think of read a just an interesting article this morning actually from uh, that guy Brett McKay on the art of manliness, and he wrote one on. It's like eight things to think about when you're waiting in line. Hmm. And it's a clever little article. I thought, I thought it was cool anyway, because he, he talks about in it of you immediately go to, and he, he says he does too, but like if you, if you're waiting in line for anything, you just immediately pick up your phone. Yeah. Um, and so he said, here are, here are like some things you can think about. Like if you catch yourself to keep your phone in your pocket and not get it out. Um, and it was, I can't, I, like one was, one was like, look at the people around you and, and pick one of them to try and put yourself in their shoes and see what their day would be like hmm. for five minutes. Um, it's like, huh, that'd be like, so if you're at the doctor's office, like nurse, doctor, whatever, like what would their day be like if I was doing that all day? Um, there's a couple other ones that I was just like, man, that sounds like honestly kind of a very life-giving thing besides mm-hmm. just using your imagination through through my phone yeah mm-hmm. no let your phone tell you what's going on all right well here's my thing it's, with the away message thing is like last night i was reading a book I, I had like an hour and a half so i was like oh i'll just i'll read this book i've been wanting to read and then three minutes in somebody texted me and then i'm i was like and it was the kind of text where it's not just like hey can you give me this information it was more like relate to me and I was like, okay, um, <laughs> all right, did, 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 click. And then I kind of look at the book and it's like, zzz, zzz. and you're like, okay. Yeah. And then you go back and, and then yeah. at a certain, certain point, you just kind of put the book to the side and you, like, you're just, I just go to mindless short things on the internet in between texts. And I realized like, this is, this is as much intellectual engagement as I can do right now because I'm. I'm in the middle of a conversation that's a text conversation, like aim. So maybe the thing is yeah. to just like, if somebody sends me a relate to me text, I just call them or don't respond. I, th- I think it's don't respond. I think that it's on you, man. Mm. I think that's the mm. only way. How far can you throw your phone? Pretty far. That should be one. I used to that throw, be able throw the a pigskin a quarter mile. <laughs> Over the mountains. <laughs> that should be one of the signs your missionaries bring out. How far can you throw your phone? <laughs> yeah, dude, it's true. It is frustrating. It's like, I mean, I, I know it's kind of a constant trope, but you're just always available. Mm-hmm. And it's just these little back and forths. I, it drives me nuts, man. I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at it. And, and now it's the standard. Right. So then if you don't reply then yeah and sometimes they can see if you've read it uh-huh. and you're just choosing not to reply <laughs> that's invasive yeah but you can change the settings on that so it doesn't okay. do that i i, I and now I, uh, it is too much technology dude <laughs> i knew it for a long time i did not use bluetooth in my car like to connect to my car mm. And it resulted in me when I was driving, just putting my phone on speaker and just yelling from a distance at my phone. <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't don't... surprise me. I've never heard of anyone doing I... that, but the fact that you did it makes sense. Well, and check this out. I bought like four or five different headsets that were like supposed to be great hands-free devices so that you could talk on the phone while you're driving, but not use Bluetooth to your, to your car. And I finally crumbled and hooked it up to my car. And now every time I approach my vehicle, like YouTube or Google is giving me suggestions on where I need to drive and like where my car is parked Mm -hmm. and how long it takes for me to get certain places. 
Like too much. Yeah. Too much. What's How the far line, can though? you throw like, your phone? What what makes it like what's the line? Where where is uh, it too much? Um where these were like normal parts of the day where I could function joyfully, peacefully, without any interaction with my phone. And now it's constantly it's like this annoying little cat. It's like stupid and it's just like nudging up against you. Like, hey, I'm here. Have you guys I'm heard here. about the light phone? Yeah. I've heard I've actually I've looked in <clears throat> to it, but I mean maybe maybe I should do something like that, but every time I look into the light phone, I'm like, man, but there would be like this the inconvenience factor mm-hmm. to it would be like Especially, I don't know, and they might have it now, but like initially they didn't have any like maps on there. Right. So especially like for, you know, you get a call and you need to run somewhere. But, and then as you look into it, you're like, no, I could, I could take my iPhone and go through all the settings and make it a light phone. Right. I could do that today, but I just lack the self-discipline to do it. Right. It's well, a, I don't know the light phone. It's basically just a phone that has... It's not a flip phone because like the the flip phone will, I, I can't remember what features it has that are smartphone ask, but it doesn't let you get on the internet to just doom scroll on social media and stuff. It only has certain things, you know, like alarm clock, messages, phone. Uh, they were working on a maps app. It, it, it connects to data in other words, but it's not, um, it's just intentionally trying to hem in some of these behaviors, these un- unwanted behaviors with your phone it makes it like impossible to do them. Um, but I know a, a friend of a friend who got one, a priest. And, uh, so then I was looking into it and I was like, okay, yeah, the inconvenience thing. Um, first of all, you'd, you'd be green in the messages in group text with people, which would frustrate everyone. Um, because you're not eye messaging, uh, but more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, it's uh, so true. It is so true. true. <laughs> um, wherever you go, there you are. You know, just because you have a light phone doesn't mean, and it doesn't solve this texting issue. You know, it's it's we are not properly engaged with our the objects in our lives. You know, these things, these tools are very helpful. Like Spotify to me is great. I like I like the fact that my phone hooks up to my my car and the music is great and I can listen to podcasts and audiobooks and. I don't have to listen to stupid radio commercials. I mean, the thing is, the irony is I look back on my childhood or adolescence, the 90s, and now you look back and it's like, oh my gosh, we had such an innocent age. I mean, I road tripped to California in 2005 with an Atlas, dude, like not even MapQuest, um, just reading maps. And I look back on that as like the golden age, but it was 2005, dude. It wasn't that, there was plenty of stupid technology and it wasn't like the innocent age of whatever imagined era that, uh, oh man, everything was just simple then. And we were all riding around on tire swings and skinning our knees and <laughs> walking up uphill both ways to school. Um, I think you just always have to engage properly with your environment. And that's a, that's a personal responsibility and choice thing. Like you're saying, Rob, the light phone, you could change your your smartphone into a light phone. The problem is not the phone, it's you. Exactly. Is what I'm saying. 100%. There there is no other way around that. Well, I do think that there there is a process like what's the line? I I do think that there is a process in trying to order yourself properly towards the objects that we use, which are supposed to better our lives and you know, hopefully yeah, make us more human, like cut out the inconvenience, add more connection. Uh, allow us to do our work and live our vocations more efficiently and happy, healthy, holy. But because it's not just an individual thing, there's like this whole network of how everybody engages with it that we're intertwined in. And so to say like, I'm not just, I'm just only going to send emails on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, like, that's not, you have to, in a sense, warm into that. 
Like it takes a little while to start to use these things properly because I mean, rebellion is too strong of a word, but nobody else is engaging it like that. Mm -hmm. So, Hey, when you text me at like eight or past eight o'clock, I'm not going to respond. Right. I'm away. I'm not chatting. That takes a little while. Yeah. Here's a thought. Cause I know you got to go, Connor. Mm -hmm. I would be, and I don't know if you can do a custom away message. I don't know if that's a thing or not. I never tried to do it or if it has to be like, I'm driving. But if you can do a custom away message, I would be very interested in trying like, I mean, even if it was a week, but like a week texting fast Hmm. where it was, you have to call me. It it would kind of be interesting if we all, all did it, but I, I, I would literally put in there like, I've given up texting until this date. If you need something personally, call me. If hmm. you need something like professionally, call me at the, this office number. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Or email me. I hate email, but yes, I would, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll just put call. I think. Mm-hmm. I'm going on retreat here. We got uh, an, an Atlanta priest retreat this week and like before I go, I have it marked down to do like an hour's worth of email. Just gonna, it's like, this is suffering time. And I'm going to block it out because email is so hard for me, man. Mm. So I'm going to knock it out and then go off on this retreat. But man, I, I think that's a cool idea, Rob. It is a cool idea. You know, I do a rest, except I have this app called Rescue Time that runs in the background of my computer and tracks how long I'm on every app and um, like, and, and uh, websites too. Like if it's cause it'll track whether you're on distracting websites or, or productive ones. So like YouTube, it'll, it'll be like a red percentage of how much time you've spent on your computer doing something bad and something good. And uh, whoa, yeah, dude, it's going up and up. I'm usually like half communication and scheduling, which is, um, you know, calendar, email, messages app, Zoom. And now it's like 85% of my time on my computer is communication and scheduling. <laughs> it doesn't seem right to me. Uh, I mean, communication is like meetings and stuff, especially on Zoom. Um, you know, you do hours. I'm doing interviews for the Samuel group. So I've got a lot of these Zoom calls. and But I'm like, this doesn't feel like... I want 80% of my time to be composition, you know, writing homilies and talks and that I'm on my computer, not putting things in my calendar. But in any case, speaking yeah. of calendar, the away well, message. Hold on. It would, yeah. Okay. But if we do that, that doesn't include sending GIFs. Obviously not. Right. No, that would be a hundred percent. But even that, I think that would be good. <laughs> You'd have to know, okay, am I, if I'm going to send this hilarious GIF to the dudes, then they might not respond like, to tomorrow. I'm, but no, I'm going to get some dumb away message from both of you saying that you've given up texting. So I would have to suffer uh, in order to send this. Rug, I would yeah. have to suffer, suffer two <laughs> messages back to me. Um, Oh god! I, really t- I mean, some some you can't not send. Mm-hmm. The Jurassic but. Park one was good, Connor. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Good talk. Okay. All right, dudes. See you next week. Gonna go check my text. <laughs> yeah. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get on emails <laughs> immediately. All right. Mom is wondering how I'm doing this morning. Later, skaters. See ya.